After eight months of excruciatingly complex and drawn out negotiations at both the intra and the intercommunal level, Iraqi factions have finally agreed upon some semblance of a preliminary government. The ongoing lengthy process underscores the extent of influence that Iran enjoys in its Western neighbor and the fact that this is not your normal jockeying for power that one sees in most countries after an election. What we have here is a very preliminary form of government emerging uh, as a result of, of negotiations between the various factions. Today's session of parliament elected a speaker and his two deputies. The speaker is a Sunni, which was the case in the outgoing parliament. And he has two deputies, one each from amongst the Shia and Kurdish communities. In addition to the election of the speaker and the two deputy speakers, the House also re-elected President Jalal Talabani for another term. But it, what is interesting here is that uh, Jalal Talabani was elected in two phases of voting, and the Sunnis largely walked out of the session when that was taking place. So we have entered into a new controversy in which the Sunnis feel betrayed by the Shiites and the Kurds. One of the most uh, interesting and important points in this eight-month saga since the election is how Iran was able to essentially checkmate the United States in the sense that the Sunni-backed al-Iraqiya bloc, a former interim prime minister, Iyad Alawi, backed the most seats in the March 7th election. Yet, Iran was able to pull together both the two Shiite blocs that came in second and third place to form a super Shia bloc and thereby claim the right to form a government, and which we now see in process. In most countries, uh, there are democratic elections, and then it's, it's normal if there's a hung parliament, there's this normal jockeying for power between those who bag the most seats to cobble together as some sort of a new government. In Iraq, it's much more than just your normal negotiations, because essentially Iraq is a new state. Uh, the the post-Ba'athist Iraq does not have a lengthy tradition of elections or governments being formed. This is the second government that's being formed since the overthrow of Saddam. What is significant about this new power-sharing arrangement is that for the first time, the Sunnis and mass were able to participate in the elections and therefore pose a challenge to the domination of the system that was enjoyed by the Shia and the Kurds thus far. But nonetheless, what this shows is that every time there's going to be an election uh, for the foreseeable future, we're going to go through the same motion again, because there is no underlying, if you will, understanding or formal power sharing mechanism. It has to be built from scratch based on the results of the elections.